In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You are advised that any view expressed by the host or their guest are not necessarily the views of the owners or management of Toginet Radio, Togi Entertainment, or the Owners Group, Inc. Motherhood Incorporated proudly presents Military Mom Talk Radio, live on Toginet.com. Co-hosted by Tina Gonzalez and Sandra Back, the owner of Motherhood Incorporated. Military Mom Talk Radio is here with a powerful platform for women to discuss their ideas, issues, and concerns with respect to the military lifestyle. Military Mom Talk Radio encourages you to share your experiences of being a military wife and mother. This show is dedicated to educating your family about the resources that are available in both the public and private sector. And we'll be sharing helpful information from women around the world. We'll cover everything military, from helping a family member cope with post-traumatic stress disorder, to navigating government programs dealing with family issues, to the struggles of deployment, along with being a working mother, both in and out of the home. This is Military Mom Talk Radio, and here are your hosts, Tina Gonzalez and Sandra Beck. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here today actually with Robin Boyd, and Robin Boyd is joining us because Tina Gonzalez, her her child is sick with pneumonia, and um, she was talking to me from Walmart uh, this weekend, and those of you who follow her on Facebook know that at that point we were worried about um, her child because... I think it was 102 fever at that point, but clearly it's gotten worse, so we're going to send a message out to Tina and her family that we get a speedy recovery and um, that she hangs in there because we all know what it's like to have a sick kid, huh, Robin? Oh, indeed. Oh, we're hoping that her little little guy is just better real soon. Once the meds get in, let's hope that that's, that's what it takes. Yeah, that it's quick and painless, and uh, but boy, you know, I still think of you know nights when my kids are sick and you're sitting up and holding them oh, and walking I know. with them. I know. Oh. And sometimes they just don't know quite how to tell you what's wrong, or they just feel yucky in that bed. <laughs> and it the crying, just, and you're so tired. Blue, which end hurts. <laughs> Right, my like, your ears hurt. Does your head hurt? They just look up. Whoa! I know, I know. And you've had you've had your time at the ER too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. we like to go to the ER every now and then. <laughs> just to check up on them. Make sure they're doing their job. <laughs> Quality control. <laughs> my son was one of those that was seemed so impervious to anything, and then my daughter came along, and I thought that they were going to just run checks on me because I was at the ER with her like every other, I don't know, it just seemed like every other week we had to take a drive for one reason or another. Oh, she oh. gave me some scares, I'll tell you. They do. It is. It is. It yep. is such, you know, as a parent, too, you're just like, you know, you don't know what's going on. You're not a medical professional. And then, like, weird stuff happens. Like, one time my son, Max, got a nosebleed that was so bad, the blood was coming out of his tear ducts. Oh, And he God. was crying yeah. bloody yeah. tears. And I was oh. horrified. I was horrified and fascinated being a Catholic, thinking, oh, my gosh, it's like a crying <laughs> statue. <laughs> But of course, oh, my you know, Lord. Oh. Yeah, 90 miles an hour to the ER, and they're like, oh, yeah, that happens. The nasal yeah. passages are near the tear ducts. And, uh, you know, I'm freaking out going, oh, my gosh. Right, stigmata. Wow. That's it, the stigmata. But, yeah. um, Robin, i got to tell you, I went to Operation Gratitude this weekend and it, packed it, boxes. It, it, and, How uh, awesome is that? I think I have a, bo- a small box that I'm sending out to you, um, and I'm going to be shipping it out because they're doing another uh, packing on December 11th, right? December 11th, they're going to yeah. be shipping their 600,000th package. That's for those of you doing the math at home, that's 600, 000, 600,000 packages. And, you know, what was most amazing about the whole event is that it's all volunteer it's all, you know, everything is donated, and, you know, there are these little, like, white shipping boxes that you see at the post office, yeah, like, yeah. you know, maybe a foot by eight inches or something like that, and they fit in there magazines and a handmade scarf, and there's Halloween candy, and there's uh, a Valentine's Day card, and, um, gosh, what else was in there? There was some coffee, there was some sunscreen, uh, just little, a beanie baby, I mean, the cutest Stuff. I mean, it really, really just made such a difference. And what was amazing 
Robin, was that there were so many volunteers there that ranged in age from about, I would say 16 was the youngest. I think that's the cutoff, if I remember right, from last right. week's I show. Right, I think so, too. Not like that, but there were veterans, you know, oh. like 80-year-old, 80, I think the one guy, I took a picture with two of them, and they were in their 80s. Isn't and, that amazing? You know, and their hands were all gnarled, and they were, yeah. oh, they were just so old, but they were standing over this thing, and they're like, look, this is important, this is yeah. important yeah. work we're doing, and to see that person stand next to, like, some sullen, angry 16-year-old that didn't want to be there, mm-hmm. and watch them talk about, like the one thing that the one of the old veterans said to the ones, you know, like the snotty little 16-year-old that didn't want to be there with her parents, yeah, she yeah. was like pushing the boxes over, pushing the boxes along. And he looked at her and he says, he's like, my dear, he said, you may not want to be here. He said, but you know what? These people are fighting for your right to stand here and be grumpy. And he's like, each one of these boxes represents a human life. It's a human being, and you're going to touch this box, and it's going to go to Iraq. And he's like, so I need you to be careful with what you're doing because this is important. And, of course, you know, she got all red, looked like she was ready to cry. But I'm right. like, yeah, you go, old man. <laughs> Oh, wow. Isn't that, that just it sends, like um, Lisa said in the chat just now, goosebumps. It's amazing. It is. It is. Because, you know, you're standing in this, you know, we were in the, the Van Nuys uh, National Guard Armory, and, <laughs> and, you know, you're in this great big room, and there's all these tables, and people are acting like human pack mules taking these boxes from station to station, you know, as they get loaded up with phone cards. And, you know, and it's so great that we have uh, Lisa Cypress came in on today mm-hmm. from um, Harvesting Happiness for Heroes because her company provided these cool little gratitude cards that go in there that talk about how grateful we are of their service. And, I mean, if I got one of these cards in there, I'd be so excited. But these, oh, you know, oh, it was like all these people, like human pack mules, moving these boxes. And then there were a lot of older uh, people there that couldn't do the physical part of it yeah, so they were yeah. sitting after table after table hand addressing these boxes oh my, oh my. it was the this most beautiful the most thing amazing, amazing organization let's let's throw that website out there www.opgratitude and that's o-p-g-r-a-t-i-t-u-d-e dot org what a wonderful organization it is, and anybody who lives in the greater Los Angeles area, I would suggest coming in. But i got to tell you, there was a family there from Long Island. There was a family there from, like, New Mexico. You know, people actually wow. flew in to be part of the assembly process because, you know, they do, you know, tens of thousands of these yeah. boxes. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I know Lisa herself is going to be pa- packing boxes on December 11th, but if you at all have the opportunity to get to the Los Angeles area and go to um, OperationGratitude.com, look it up, be part of this, it is really um it's really an amazing thing because 100,000 boxes are scheduled for next year, for 2011. and That's stunning. I mean, you can't, you know, you think of a stadium, like I think of Rich Stadium where I grew up. I mean, 100,000 people, and you get to touch, you get to be part of this. And, you know, it really puts the, like, Thanksgiving into perspective. What amazing, what an awesome thing to do, Sandra, on Thanksgiving weekend. That was wonderful. It was, it was, and it was fun to see just everybody's reaction, and, you know, and people were happy and, and sad because it was it was one of those, like, poignantly beautiful moments where you, yeah. it's like the first time I went to Arlington as a little girl and asked my dad, like, you know, what are all those white sticks, you know, because to me they just like, like a sea of white sticks, and my sure. dad was like, wow, you know, each one of those is a, you know, one of our armed service uh, men and women, and, you know, I couldn't even wrap my head around it, but watching yeah. these boxes, these white boxes made me think of Arlington and and, you know, it's just, it's, we're so lucky to live in a country that we can do this, and we're so lucky to have the opportunity to be part of these organizations to make a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. God bless all of them. I know. That's a hard one to top. What did you do this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Nowhere near that, Sandra. We, um... We had an odd weekend. Um, my kids are involved, as, as you know, in some um, independent film work, and uh, we have a fellow who's doing doing yet another assignment. So we had a little film crew in and out of the house all weekend. <laughs> they tend to use our house, so they tend to use, like I, you knew my my husband was a was a part of it this time around. 
So, oh, that's right. Uh, he had a role in there, in a role in, <laughs> in your family. Now, how can people see these things? Are they on YouTube? They are on YouTube. Um, right now, some of them are a little more of adult content because of their language. But he's a, he's a film student, a cinematographer, um, and I think he has, he has some potential. I just really uh, think this kid has, has a great eye. And you know how sometimes people are – just gifted in what they do, whether it be a, a photographer who can capture that that butterfly. We all have the the equipment, but how we use that equipment is amazing. Some people who are teachers just are they can relay that information and, and regurgitate it, but in order to capture that um, the essence of what you're learning, not everyone can do that. So. Um, I, I think this, this young fellow, once, once we have a few more things to share, I'll be glad to, to get his channel out there to everybody because I just think he has a great, just a great eye. Well, and he's part of, you know, he's like part of our little team here because he's your son and we want to support our families. And, yeah. you know, that's what Military Mom Talk Radio is all about, not only supporting our troops but our families here at home. Sure. And, um, you know, as we give thanks on this, you know, post Thanksgiving weekend, as we stuffed ourselves silly with turkey and pie and all sorts of good stuff, it was really good to be reminded that you know, especially like your son Robin, a lot of these freedoms that we take for granted. You know, the freedom to make film, the freedom to put it up on YouTube, and Absolutely. you know, like you said, it has adult content. Um, you know, in a lot of countries around the world, we, we wouldn't have that opportunity. That's absolutely right. Absolutely. Actually, right. we wouldn't even be on the air, most likely. You know, when I, you're right. When I think of, I have a girlfriend, My one of my very good friends is from Iran, and she escaped and went to Germany, became a doctor, and then came to the United States. And it's always fun to talk to her on Thanksgiving because, you know, her Thanksgiving prayers are so amazing because the things she's thankful for are everything that we take for granted here. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We, uh, and we have someone who's very gifted coming on today, don't we? We do, we do. We have Lisa Cypress Kamen of Harvesting Happiness for Heroes, and she's going to talk to us about PTSD. She just finished a training program with our military uh, that specializes in um, kind of PTSD and TBIs. She is Lisa Cypress Kamen. My name is Sandra Beck. I'm here with Robin Boyd on Military Mom Talk Radio, and I want you guys to check out OperationGratitude.com. Check us out on iTunes. You can pick up our other shows on Military Mom Talk talkradio.com Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning. That's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Tina Gonzalez. And we'll be right back after these. People think I've made it. I'm popular. I seem happy all the time. I have great clothes and I'm involved in everything. But I have questions, doubts, and fears, just like every other teenager. That's why I'm glad for Teen Talk Radio, where it's all about choices. Join us for Teen Talk Radio with Nicole O'Dell, Thursday nights at 10, 9 central on toginet.com. The choices we have to make that can alter the course of our lives. Life is too much pressure if we try to go it alone. I tune in to Teen Talk Radio with Nicole O'Dell every week to get reminded that I'm not alone. Nicole O'Dell is an expert on what happens in the lives of teenagers. Join her as she deals with topics like peer pressure, purity, drugs, alcohol, and many other things that might come up along the way. She writes books and speaks to people all over the place, but she says her favorite moments are when she can pull up a chair and chat with teens about what's important to us. For more information on Nicole and her books, go to NicoleO'Dell.com. Then join us for Teen Talk Radio with Nicole O'Dell, Thursday nights at 10, 9 central on Toginet.com. Teen Talk Radio, where it's all about choices. Adoption, Journey to Motherhood with Mary Beth Wells. Monday mornings at 9, 8 a.m. Central. This is not your typical show about adopting children. This is a shared experience from Mary Beth's heart. Mary Beth will be talking about and covering all the issues pertaining to adoption, including adopted parents, birth parents, adoptees, foster care, and infertility. So... 
How did your journey to motherhood begin? Or are you still on the path? We want to hear all voices sharing their stories and talking about those issues that are so dear to our hearts. You see, Mary Beth is a birth mom that relinquished a child for adoption and ended up coming full circle by adopting two beautiful little girls from Guatemala. And that led to her starting a doll company about adopting baby dolls from all around the world so that children could choose their own doll and learn about that doll's heritage. For more on Mary Beth and her dolls, go to PreciousBabyDolls.com. Then join us for Adoption, Journey to Motherhood with Mary Beth Wells. Monday mornings at 9, 8 a.m. Central. Remember, the heart knows no boundaries. There ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now, let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Tina Gonzalez and Sandra Beck. Hey, Military Moms. This is Sandra Beck, and I'm here today with my co-host, Robin Boyd, who's filling in for Tina Gonzalez. Robin, we were talking. (laughs) We're thinking of you, Tina. (laughs) We're so glad we're not in your shoes right now. Yeah. Oh, you know, when we were talking on the break about um, Carolyn Blasek, I just want to, you know, formally put out to the universe that she is an amazing, amazing human being. What I saw this weekend that she has accomplished, and yes, with the help of others, but kind of spearheading that movement and putting these packages together, bringing all these people together so that we can have this amazing experience. Um, I just want to say, God bless you, Carolyn Blasek. Keep going strong, and we're going to work as hard as we can over here at Military Mom Talk Radio to support you in all your efforts. Amen. Amen. And one of the women who provided one of the items that were in these Operation Gratitude packages is with us today. Her name is Lisa Cypress Kamen, and she is not only a host on Toginet, you need to check out her um her radio show, which airs Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, so that's West Coast time, so noon on the East Coast. And she has an amazing company that does happiness workshops. I've been to them. They are life-changing, and they are really a whole lot of fun. I'd like to welcome and introduce you to Lisa Cypress Kamen. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Robin. Yay. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I got to tell you, those cards that you put in the gratitude cards that you're that you provided, you you created and designed and provided for Operation Gratitude were so great because they were such a unique color. Lisa, I got to tell you, they really stood out in the boxes. They weren't going to get lost. I mean, there's phone cards in there. There was a veterans tip card. There were a couple other little cards in there. But yours was this beautiful, bright, serene aqua that looked like it just made me think of relaxing by the ocean. Oh, excellent. Well, I'm happy to hear that. You sent me um, the little uh, photo, you know, through email or through text, and I was so tickled to see this, what felt like a ginormous box filled with these cards, you know, to just tell the troops how we feel, you know, wish them well, wish them a safe return, express our gratitude for what they do. And, you know, for me, the understanding is that I don't have to necessarily have a political position, but I do have to share my gratitude for what these service personnel do on our behalf. And Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, this is not a political organization. This is an organization about caring for the human spirit. Yes, very much so. So thanks for shooting me that photo. That was a lot of fun to see. And I haven't seen them in, in person yet, so I'm looking forward to, to my turn on December 11th. And... Um, having one of them in my hot little hands. <laughs> you know, I know that they were, <laughs> there were, you know, a, a, not, a, not a, you know, there weren't, a, a, there were thousands of them there. I didn't think they would mind if I filched two of them. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so, Lisa, tell me a little bit about yourself. For our, re- or for our listeners today who haven't um, had the honor of listening to your show or hearing you on our past shows, um, tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into the happiness business. Well, first of all, I am not um, a military mom or a military spouse. I 
stumbled upon happiness as a business and stumbled upon the concept of bringing my work to the military community. I went back to college in midlife to become a psychologist, and along the way I discovered both filmmaking and happiness as my passion, and it became a real uh, sense of purpose for me to tell the story of human happiness through film, that happiness is accessible to each and every one of us, regardless of exterior circumstance, that happiness coexists alongside adversity, and it really comes down to choice, that happiness comes down to an inside job, and really it's about taking, learning certain tools um, to help us grow our happiness, to harvest our happiness, and understand that life is not always easy. In fact, it's tough for many of us, and all of us at some point in time in our life will experience trauma. And the, the idea is that how are we going to relate to it when it does strike? And that is really the premise of my work, and a natural evolution of the work went from just uh, really tr reaching out to the general community to creating a specific program for military personnel and their spouses and children who are um, returning from service and having issues with post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, and just general reintegration issues back into civilian life. So there seemed to be a natural blending of what I'm doing to reach out to these men and women who are in need of a stigma-free and really no-nonsense no nonsense approach to restoring their smiles and, and getting their lives back in order. That's a tall order. That's a tall order. Now, um, what's Harvesting Happiness for Heroes? I love that. Oh, thanks. Well, Harvesting Happiness for Heroes is the nonprofit that I'm in the process of forming, which will be the company that uh, will offer workshops to the military personnel and their loved ones, um, effective immediately. <laughs> that's uh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so um, what are your goals for this program? The goals of, of Harvesting Happiness for Heroes are to offer Harvesting Happiness workshops at, at no charge to whoever wants them, needs them, or would like to have them in, in their, in their, within their communities, within their hometowns. And um, I'm going to achieve this through corporate sponsorship and foundations and, and, and grant resources. And uh, we will be doing this nationwide. We presently have a, a presence in California, New York, and Massachusetts, and we'll just keep, keep growing. It, it is not a kit. It is a live workshop presentation. At some point, we will develop training programs that others can participate in and offer the workshops to their groups directly. And uh, right now, it is the, the, the army of one, me. <laughs> I am the, 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 the team, the team the team of facilitators and the founder of the organization. And um, I do have volunteers and people that I work with um, that really give of themselves and their heart to make me look good and help me get this program along the way. Two of the angels who are on the line with me today, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd, are also very much involved in Harvesting Happiness Talk Radio, Harvesting Happiness, H-Factor, Where is Your Heart?, and What is Your Happiness, which is the production company for the film that I created um, as my thesis for my master's degree and is, in fact, the greatest teaching tool for the Harvesting Happiness workshops. Elisa, can you give us those websites again for those listeners that want to check you out? Yes, we have uh, harvestinghappiness.com, just spelling it out, the words harvestinghappinesstogether.com, and then we have whatisyourhappiness.com, and lisacayman.com. You know, Lisa, you do so many different things for so many different people. It's really a joy um, to have you on the show. Um, one of the things that I think is most amazing about what you're doing is that you, you chose voluntarily to go do this training that was offered by the military. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I recently attended a one-week training that was designed for civilian mental health care providers to reach out to the military community to help 
them with the post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, and post-deployment reintegration issues. And it was quite an eye-opening experience, not only to learn about milita- military culture and vocabulary, but also just the the, the cold, hard facts of what some of our service personnel are experiencing in deployment and once they return. And it is, um, it is very serious. We have approximately 2 million military personnel that are just deployed, and the military itself says that about 20 to 25 percent of these people will return with some form of PTSD or TBI. And that is a lot of people that are in, in need of services and not that are not always accessible, that are not always user-friendly, that are not always stigma-free. And that really is the goal of what Harvesting Happiness for Heroes has set out to accomplish. Well, and those estimates that you were given were given to you in, that, in that, the seminar that you went to? Yes. Yes, because the and, estimates that we've heard, um, we've had a couple. We had a um, PTSD expert on a couple months ago, and she was saying that they were experiencing rates sometimes as high as forty percent of groups of service members coming back. So, you know, whether it's twenty five percent or forty percent, um, it's a large, it's a large segment of our service personnel. Indeed. Indeed, and um, they don't always know how to reach out for treatment. You know, there is such a stigma uh, attached to seeking out psychiatric or psychological counseling services that sometimes the um, the soldier might not want to necessarily step up to the plate and, and, and ask for help. And so one of the things that is specifically designed into this program is to make it so it's really about well-being, it's really about human flourishing, and less about... Um, what went wrong. You know, we, it, it's more or less identifying that trauma existed in, in, in the field, in service, and now recreating one's life with that trauma as part of one's not, life, not just the defining moment of it. Well, and PTSD is really nothing new. I know that, um, you know, it's, it got its formal diagnosis in 1980, but, you know, in World War, the Civil War, they called it soldier's heart, and in World War II, they called it combat fatigue. You know, World War, or I'm sorry, World War I, it was combat fatigue. World War II, it was gross stress reaction. And then in uh, Vietnam, um, you know, we got you know, started being called battle fatigue, shell shock. Um, oh, sorry, I'm having a tough time with these today. Battle fatigue, shell shock, and uh, post-Vietnam syndrome. So it's really great that, um, you know, that you're here today. You're going to explain um, a lot more about post-traumatic stress disorder, what we need to know, how to recognize it, what are some of the signs and symptoms. We're here today on Military Mom Talk Radio with Lisa cypress Cayman, and she is the creator of Harvesting Happiness for Heroes. My name is Sandra Beck. I'm here with my co-host Robin Boyd, and we will catch you after the break. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? That's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Tina Gonzalez. And we'll be right back after these. Believe in your fairy tale to make your zing come true. I love it. Debbie Glickman and Deanna Cohen know it. Join these soul sisters on toginet.com. Believe in your fairy tale to make your zing come true. Showcases two sides. One, to help entrepreneurs showcase their products and tell their story of their happily ever after. And two, to interview people who have realized their own fairy tale and doing something to benefit others. This show is here to help folks who have an idea and want to get it off the ground, as well as to inspire people to make the world a better place by doing something extraordinary or out of the box to help others. Both of these entrepreneurs have their own businesses and websites. With more information on their past Passions and successes. First for Debbie, FairytaleWishesInc.com. And for Deanna, the next big zing.com. Believe in your fairy tale to make your zing come true. With the Soul Sisters, Debbie Glickman and Deanna Cohen. 
on toginet.com. Come learn with me as the show created as much for the host as the audience. Join host Danny Walker Wednesdays at 11, noon central on toginet.com as she invites you to get your boots on and walk through life's triumphs and troubles with her. Come learn with me as the beginning of a movement, a community filled with caring people who share information, allowing everyone to participate, gain, and grow. What works? What doesn't? Your host, Danny Walker, is a self-proclaimed student, not expert, and she'll share very candidly passions, perspectives, failures, her family's battle with illness, her restaurant inspirations to keep being a wife, parent, and more, all the while including industry experts, disease survivors, and guests to add to the mix. For more on Danny and her show, go to dannywalker.com, D-A-N-I walker.com. If you've ever searched high and low to find answers to sickness, disease, and debt, come learn with me and let's get our questions answered together. Come learn with me with host Danny Walker, Wednesdays at 11, noon central on toginet.com. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Hey, Uncle Sam, put your name at the top of his list and the statue of liberty started shaking her fist. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now, let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Tina Gonzalez and Sandra Beck. Courtesy. Hey, Military Moms. This is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with my co-host, uh, Robin Boyd, who's filling in for Tina Gonzalez today. Robin, this is turning out to be a really information-packed show. It sure is. So much information, and I think there are so many um, unknowns with PTSD that it's really important that everybody just sort of gets on board and learns as much as they can. Well, absolutely, because, you know, the soldiers of today are going to be our boyfriends and girlfriends, our, you know, our, you know, friends of our, you know, aunts and uncles of our, our kids' mm-hmm. friends. I mean, they're going to, you know, people that have served in this um, war are a part of our society. And, and the more that we educate ourselves, not only as military families, but as the general public, the, the better off we are to serve them as they have so valiantly absolutely. served us. I'm married to one. <laughs> You are married. To, you are married to one of a special kind of guy. Uh, yeah. He, well, and one of the things that I think too is that PTSD is probably something that can be very latent. It's not something they just immediately come home and need to sort of uh, wind down, so to speak. They, they this may be something that it doesn't come up immediately. That's what well, I have I discovered. Have- um, you know, before we get into that, guys, because I think that's really important, um, and, um, you know, there's so much to know about PTSD, and we're discovering so much. You know, from what I can tell, I look at uh, Richard Swanson produced a bunch of um, information on PTSD for me, and I thought, oh, you know, I've kind of read all this stuff already, and I've had a couple shows on this, and I come in here, and it's like there's even more information, and it's constantly changing. And Lisa... What um, what are some of the PTSD symptoms and signs? You know, how, how do you even know? Like, if your family member comes back, you know, what are some things that you can look for? Well, firstly, that that a traumatic experience usually produces emotional shock. I think this is you know common for most people. When you witness something or do something that is traumatic, you have a shock. You know, there's a shock to the body, there's a shock to the mind, a shock to your sensibilities, and there may be emotional upset resulting from it. This is natural. I think the issue um, with PTSD comes down to do these symptoms go away? And the symptoms often include and are not limited to, this is a, a kind of a, a broad brushstroke of what somebody uh, uh, who has PTSD can uh, uh, report is uh, fear and anxiety, re-experiencing of the actual trauma itself that's triggered by um, external circumstances such as the time of day, place, smell, a noise, or any situation that would remind you of the trauma. And um, there are unwanted thoughts, you know, where there's flooding of thoughts or you can be perhaps sitting in traffic and then suddenly you start re-experiencing the trauma that um, that existed. Uh, There are flashbacks, nightmares, you know, increased arousal where you're jumpy, jittery, shaky, 
easily startled, have difficulty concentrating, um, and this ar- continuous arousal can lead to impatience and irritability, um, sometimes sleep problems, either mm-hmm. not, not getting enough sleep or waking during the night, sleepwalking, not being able to return to sleep. These are incredibly common um, uh, reports in PTSD. Now, uh, when you say the word triggers, because that sounds more like a medical term or a gun term, um, but you're really talking about, like, reminders, like something reminds, reminds them of something and then a response happens. That's what you're saying? That is exactly what I'm saying, that um, there, it, it can come out of the blue, in fact, where something will happen, something that is extraneous or not necessarily even related to the event can, can flip the switch where there, uh, the flooding of memories or reactions from the event comes forward. Now, Robin, you raised a good point in the beginning. Um, You know, you said, well, you know, like, what's the timeline on stuff like this? I mean, it's like, you know, we're dealing with emotions, we're dealing with memories, and, you know, we're dealing with reminders, or as you put it, Lisa, a trigger. I mean, you said a trigger could be a smell. I mean, Mm -hmm. that could happen this week, or it could happen, you know, two years from now. Right. Well, it's interesting that, that, that you bring that up because the military usually says that the PTSD symptoms will occur shortly after the trauma. But, in fact, there are many reports uh, where it happens years later, not yeah, just in... Absolutely. Yes, not mm-hmm. just in military personnel, but, um, Robin, you, you made a point in a discussion earlier about mm-hmm. Vietnam-era veterans who may or may not have experienced the symptoms but have lived for decades with um, some very problematic behavior, really not having a label or identifying it. Mm. And then there may be another trauma that, that occurs in their life that is unrelated to the military issue that they, that they witnessed, and it is then triggered again. And what was difficult about those veterans was that there was not the same kind of support for them coming home as in many other um, conflicts or, or wars. So what issues they were having, they were not given chances to seek help the same, in the same way. Um, and, and I think that has been what's so difficult about those particular veterans, and I think it's very true. Some of the symptoms that you uh, listed, boy, I sure see even today, and he's 62. Wow. So, Mm-hmm. And how many years has it been since he served? He came home in 1970. Mm. Yeah. So 40 and years I, ago. Yeah, and I'm still seeing some of those things today. So that's what's so difficult, I think, and some of the unknowns, well, not unknowns, but at least some of the, the difficulties that we have in recognizing this and having the ability to say this is a good thing to seek out this support because um, um, th- th- there there could be so many other things that enjoyment could be could be found if you weren't um, having difficulty appreciating it because of the things that you're going through. Well, you know, you make a very good point. Um, one of the modes uh, or coping mechanisms that many of the Vietnam-era veterans uh, relied upon, I think, was avoidance. Because it yes. was not uh, um, considered acceptable to seek out counseling or psychiatric care because of, A, the stigma or, right. B, the possibility of losing military benefits, right. they just threw themselves into work or threw themselves into life and sometimes threw themselves into addiction. Mm-hmm. rather than, than deal with the feelings that were coming up resulting from the trauma, what they right. witnessed, what they did. You know, war is rough. You know, yeah. these, these men and women, and particularly in Vietnam, mostly men, sometimes did things that they were very shameful of and have had tremendous guilt over. Mm-hmm. And, you know, well, that, and it's that, really, you know, what you guys are talking about, Lisa, it's really counterintuitive to what we train, like, you know, our infantrymen, our soldiers, our Marines. I mean, we train them to be tough. We train them to be strong. We train them to rely on each other and, you know, to get through what they need to get through. And then when they come home, it's it's got to be really difficult for them. I know it's difficult. I have a lot of friends who have suffered. I think of, you know, Tina's husband at the time he was on talking about, you know, he he had a hard time coming forward, and a lot of people do because, A, it's 
contrary to what you're taught to be as a Marine. And B, you know, you don't want to lose your benefits. And if you're on a career path for the military, you don't want to put on your record, you know, that you were treated for PTSD because how that how is that going to look for you in advancement and leadership possibilities? Exactly, exactly. And, you know, what often happens is that um, through the avoidance, numbness takes place where you become sort of numb to your emotions, numb to feeling connected, numb to feelings of love um, and community or, or, or pleasant feelings. You know, it's, it is part of the avoidance um, that, that sometimes the painful thoughts or feelings that come to mind are just so intense that you block them out altogether and, in fact, block out part of the trauma that then doesn't reoccur until mm-hmm. years later. Mm-hmm. So how would you recognize this, Lisa, like as a spouse or a parent, you know, your kid comes home, your spouse comes home, or your boyfriend or girlfriend, or in some cases your mom or dad come home? I mean, what, I mean, we talked about like, you know, what are some of the things that people experience from from a PTSD um, experience, but what would you teach a family member or someone who cares about someone returning? What would you tell them to look for or, you know, to keep an eye out for? Well, I would, uh, firstly, would be grief and depression. You know, uh, are they sad for weeks on end? Most of us in our lifetime experience periods of sadness or even brief depression. But if they last more than a couple of weeks, usually they're indicators that there's something more serious going on. And I would say that that, you know, when I say grief and depression, you know, does the person, does the loved one feel like getting out of bed? Are they are they receiving any enjoyment as they go through their day? Are they able to connect with friends and loved ones? Do they feel that, you know, life has meaning and value to them? And if some of these things are not, or, or if these feelings aren't present with that loved one, that's a good indicator that this person needs some help. Certainly, uh, uh, an intervention in, in the first place would be asking the loved one to, to seek out help, to get educated him or herself, to find ways of intervening that might be more comfortable and subtle than just telling the person, you know, you're really messed up and you better get help. <laughs> you know, which can be shocking. And oh, sure. Then there and would be and I'm sure that would not help, you know, the whole situation. I mean, when you talk about, you know, recurrent re-experiencing the trauma, avoidance, and then, you know, some chronic physical symptoms, you know, coming at somebody and going, look, you know, you've got a problem, you need to get some help, um, you might want to say that, but there's different ways that you can say it. And I think families can also educate themselves. Um, there's a great website that Rick found for us that I want to um, give to you guys here. Let me find it here in my notes because we were on it. It's um, it's a great resource for military personnel. It's uh, PTSD, just like post-traumatic stress disorder, ptsd.vaveteransaffair.gov. Again, that's ptsd.va.gov. I would suggest you guys check it out. I also think you guys should go to Lisa Cypress Cayman's site. Uh, that's harvestinghappiness.com. Check out whatisyourhappiness.com because there's lots of great information on there, and we can't wait to uh, see her her stuff come up for Harvesting Happiness for Heroes. My name is Sandra Beck, and I am your host today on Military Mom Talk Radio. I'm here with Robin Boyd, who's filling in with Tina Gonzalez. And when we come back after the break, Lisa's going to talk to us about the treatment for PTSD and how PTSD is assessed. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? That's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Tina Gonzalez. And we'll be right back after these. Come be a part of Pat Sloan's Creative Talk Radio. Her goal is to inspire you to be creative every day. Pat Sloan's Creative Talk Radio, Monday afternoons at 4, 3 central on toginet.com. Pat lives and breathes being creative through her quilt design business, but her creativity and interests have no bounds. On her show, she'll be introducing us to guests through interviews and talks that have a creative life. We'll learn more about what goes on in the world of quilting. 
And since Pat, like many of us, is creative in many ways, she'll also introduce us to creative people in other crafts like knitting, crochet, paper arts, and lots more. Pat is also an author, a lecturer, designer, and cheerleader of many. She's tried her hand at making almost everything you can think of and does many crafts to keep her inspired to create. Check out her website, patsloan.com. What makes Pat most happy is to inspire others to be creative every day. So join us for Pat Sloan's Creative Talk Radio, Monday afternoons at 4, 3 Central on toginet.com. Get ready for the Not-So-Soccer Mom, Tuesday afternoons at 1 Eastern, noon Central on Toginet with Jill Hickey. You name it, from politics to pop culture to Jill's search for the perfect bronzer and chicken salad. The Not-So-Soccer Mom will weigh in on it all. The sentence, I have no opinion about that, is one that Jill has never uttered. Everybody loves in the early 90s, Jill finally decided to put her thoughts, opinions, mom advice, love of pop culture, hummus, and Starbucks, working out, cosmetic shopping, and politics into an actual website, and thus NotSoSoccerMom.com was born. Shortly after her fourth child, a boy, Jerome, now she's really got tons of topics to share with you. This is Laugh Out Loud Funny, and we're not kidding. What's a loud Nebraska girl who lived in Little Rock for many years and now is up in the Northeast doing? Chronicling her opinions on everything. The wheels aren't off yet, but it's close. It's the Not-So-Soccer Bomb with Jill Hickey. Tuesday afternoons at 1 Eastern, noon Central on toginet.com. There ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Welcome back. To Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com, covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now, let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Tina Gonzalez and Sandra Beck. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here today with Robin Boyd, who's filling in for Tina Gonzalez. And um, Robin, this is just just such um, amazing information, and I'm so glad that we're able to bring it to our military moms today. Um, we were talking during the break um, about, you know, coming into our final segment today, talking about how PTSD is assessed, and I really don't want to talk about it from a clinical perspective. I'd like to talk, Lisa, a little bit about from a layman's, um, you know, kind of a layman's terms. You know, what are some of the, like, maybe the top three indicators that there's something amiss or that, you know, that PTSD might be at play? Well, I think that the top things that come to mind are alcohol and substance abuse. Is my loved one drinking and drugging to excess? Is it impeding uh, their performance at at work or in the home within the family dynamic? The other thing is is anger. Is there, um, are they raging? Are they hitting? Are they violent? Are they, uh, are they suicidal? These are, uh, that's more than three, but certainly they are all important issues. And uh, oftentimes when the military personnel is returning, the service member, there is violence in the family. You know, there are uh, unresolved anger issues that are manifesting themselves that are coming out um, in spousal abuse. And I think it's really important to recognize that if this happens, if any of these things happen, they are a cry for help and that the partner or spouse can go and seek help and become informed to help their loved one. Now, what's going on under the, like, you know, kind of under the sheets with this stuff? I mean, you've got a service member that comes home. They might have, like you said, alcohol or substance abuse problems or might have some issues with anger management. You know, can you shed some insight as to, like, what's going on inside of our service members or, you know, what possibly they could be thinking about? I know you you had mentioned to me about, like, their self-image change, their view of the world change, they've got trust issues. Can you give us some information so it can help us understand what's going on inside? Well, I think that within the uh, the mind of, of the service member is is a lot of doubt and a lot of negativity, a lot of negative view of the world and those around him or her. Um, Their relationships are impacted. Their interpersonal relationships are impacted. Um, Certainly the sexual relationship in many cases between between partners is affected by PTSD and traumatic brain injury for that matter. And um, in order to help the um, service member heal and the family dynamic repair, it is 
essential to get some sort of intervention to, to help. So what what is your best advice in this situation? Like how would you advise us to handle it? Well, if if I were uh, uh, in, in a small town, let's say, and I didn't have access to um, uh, a VA center, there are websites, and I'd like you to repeat the one that you did about the VA PTSD site because it's a very, very good one, and I'm going to also uh, give you another one for traumatic brain injury because they are huge resources that do offer links out into the community of where one can outreach for assistance, albeit a hotline or a support group for spouses, and just general guidelines of how to um, deal with their loved one and, and seek out help. So if you could give well, this. Absolutely. You guys can check out ptsd.va.gov. I'd also encourage you guys to go to Military Connection and Military.com. There's lots of resources on those two sites. Um, one of them, I can't remember which one, does have a suicide hotline number that's available 24-7. So that's Military.com, MilitaryConnection.com, and uh, ptsd.va.gov. And I'd like to give a couple of sites for traumatic brain injury for TBI. One is Defense and Veterans Brain Injury Center, D-Z-B-I-C, and their website is www.d as in David, V as in Victor, B as in Bob, I as in Ira, and C as in Charlie.org. And the second is uh, for uh, more moderate and severe traumatic brain injury, and that is traumatic brain injury at oz.org. And that's www.traumaticbraininjuryatoz.org. Not, not to be, you know, the village idiot over here, but how, like, a TBI is like a mild, or is like a concussion, right? I mean, you have to educate us about the difference between a TBI and PTSD, because I see them all the time. You know, they're kind of written, they come up together. They're like sisters when I see on the Internet. It's like if I'm reading PTSD stuff, TBI comes into play or vice versa. How, what's the difference and how, how do we tell them apart? A TBI is another word for a mild concussion, which is a blow or jolt to the head that disrupts the functioning of the brain. Um, and a concussion or TBI is the most common, uh, or a concussion is the most common form of TBI in the military population. And concussions result from a head injury that briefly knocks you out or makes you feel confused or see stars. Not, you know, not uncommon to what we have in, in sports injuries you know, out and about in our daily lives. But in the, in the military environment, these often come from IEDs or bombs exploding, you know, within the vicinity of uh, a, service, a service person, and they're often blind, like that they may not recognize that they were even injured until after the fact. Um, typically, the symptoms will improve within hours or days and then resolve themselves permanently within weeks. But in some cases, they won't. And, you know, uh, the, the service personnel will experience some cognitive, some thinking issues where there may be slowed thinking, poor concentration, memory problems, difficulty finding words, you know, accessing the right words to describe a situation or um, just even the right word for something that you're thinking of, you know, that sense of having something be on the tip of your tongue. And here's where it is the kissing cousin of PTSD in that there are some emotional issues that can present, such as anxiety, depression, irritability, and mood swings. And that's not to, and to mention some of the physical symptoms of TBI, which I'd like to give a few of those because they may be helpful to some of our listeners, and that is headache, sleep disturbances, dizziness, balance problems, nausea or vomiting, fatigue, visual disturbances, sensitivity to light, or even that um, hearing ringing in the ears. Well, and I can see how it's easy to get them confused because when you, you know, you were reading that list, I happened to be looking at the stuff Rick pulled up on PTSD, and they're like poor concentration, blackouts, difficulty remembering things, you know, 
there's some crossover, like both of these two um, issues have a lot of crossover and having similar symptoms. Yes. Yes, and, you know, it is only through a more clinical assessment that the diagnosis can be made, but these are things to look out for. And as a, and as a loved one of a service member, um, we have the position of being able to be an advocate. And sometimes, you know, we can't always see what's wrong with ourselves, but those closest to us can say, you know what, something is just not right. And it's in that questioning of something that is not right or is being slightly out of place that can really save lives, save the family dynamics, save the relationships, and, and save the, the, the service member, him or herself. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's there's just so much to um, there's so much to know and so much to um, you know to learn about this. Can you give? Um, I'm going to give that PTSD.va.gov site to everybody. Can you repeat those sites for everybody? The, because um, just, there is yes. a lot of information. Yes, yes. Um, this would be the Defense and Veterans Brain Injury Center, and it's www. and it's the initials D. V B I C dot org. This is for traumatic brain injury. And a second site would be um, www dot traumatic brain injury at A T O Z dot org. Now, Lisa, we're we're closing out to the end of the show, but before we do, I would like you to take uh, a, a minute or so, um, if you could give a message to a service member or a family member that's listening today, that um, of what they can expect, um, you know, in talking to somebody like you. Because I think a lot of times people are scared. I know I was scared even just to go to marriage counseling. I thought I was going to get yelled at. Um, <laughs> But you know, it's like you're a bad, you're a bad wife. Um, but you know what can they expect to, to you know, experience with uh, you know starting with somebody like you? Well, I, I am I am not a uh, a licensed clinical psychologist. I have my master's degree in psychology. So when somebody would come to me, they would be coming to me in the capacity of a coach, somebody with, that would help them set intentions and goals for emotional recovery and life moving forward. So say you were a service member and you come out and you're in your in your mid twenties and you're trying to figure out what to do with your life and you've suffered PTSD or TBI and you've got some issues that are unresolved, um, Harvesting Happiness for Heroes could help you cultivate and take charge and responsibility of your life to uh, create a plan of action to gain some control over your own life once again and create an action plan to move forward to have a great life because the reality of it is is um, these people are coming home and they're young and they have their whole lives ahead of them and they don't need to be defined by trauma and tragedy. It can once again just be a part of who they are and their human experience, not what, uh, not what makes them the person that they are completely. Well, and I think it's really important that you bring up, you know, the age. You know, even when I was at the OpGrat stuff uh, this weekend, you know, when you look at at the ages of, of a lot of the service members over there, you know, they're 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, and they're having this, you know, they're having this this experience, and they still have, you know, 60, 70 years left on this planet, and we want to make it as, you know, wonderful as possible for them. Uh, my name is Sandra Beck. I am the host of Military Mom Talk Radio. I'm here with Robin Boyd. We've had Lisa Cypress Kamen today as our guest. If you missed this show, I would suggest you check it out on MilitaryMomTalkRadio.com, Toginet.com, or iTunes and catch this because there's lots of helpful information. And check out Lisa Cypress Kamen at HarvestingHappiness.com. <laughs>